We have a tradition we're trying to grow. We have a, a bell back there, a Liberty Bell. Every time we win, somebody's going to go ring the bell. And uh, Amir was the bell ringer today. He was great. I thought his rim protection and with Joel on sort of a limited type of role, uh, we were unsure if he was going to play. He was great. But to your point, the bench really helped us tonight. Ben's going to get to the rim on anybody, but with, without Rudy there, is that making him I mean, it was going into the game. You say, well, what do we feel like we have to do to attack them? And it was clear, you know, by gut feeling, a little bit common sense, but also by metrics that they really struggled. You know, they were fouling a lot since Rudy was not a part of their, uh, you know, backline defense. And so we really put a premium on trying to drive and, and put pressure on the interior players. And uh, Ben, I thought, was excellent, as you say, attacking. Uh, as a team, it was a point of emphasis in a scouting report. And Ben, I thought, did a really good job of that tonight. With JJ in the second half? Pardon me? What clicked with JJ in the second half? I think, you know, maybe more opportunities. I, I was really happy with the way that they executed down the stretch. You know, we have a look we go to with about five minutes left in sort of close games. And I thought that... You know, we did a really good job. Ben did a good job. JJ did a good job of freeing himself up. But uh, he had, I think, zero points in the first half and, what, 20 in the second. Ben wasn't that dissimilar. I think Ben had five points in the first half. And both of those guys, you know, I think combined for 42 points. But I think, uh, you know, he got some better looks. We helped him get better looks. And I especially give him a lot of credit and the team a lot of credit uh, in the last five minutes, generating those looks. The way Ben took the game by the scruff of the neck in the second half, is that something you can teach? What he's done, where, where in Australia are you from? Sydney. Sydney. You asked me that in Toronto. <laughs> okay, see, well, when you coach, you know, like you get older, you, you can't remember everybody. It's a beautiful city. Um, I think that the thing that stood out for me the most with Ben is you, you can all see him you know, sort of kicking his back, and he's taken off. Like, he's ready to just run it down somebody's throat. He did that a few times, but he's now starting to be able to come to jump stops and gather himself. And I think, like, as we watch LeBron over his career, you know, that, that straight line doesn't all the time work. You need to come to some semblance of order and balance. And he did that a few times where he took off. He got where he wanted to. We put him in a lot of deep corner pick and rolls. But that thing that we've been working on, he's been working on, I thought he did a great job with coming to some jump stops. Right. Does this win say a lot about the team's growth? Because when you look at it, you guys struggled to shoot the ball. You, you struggled from the foul line. And I know J.J. and Ben stepped up in the, in the second half, but it wasn't one of your best offensive performances, but you were still able to win this game. I think that that is true, and I think that it has a lot to do with Utah's style. You know, so many of the games that we've been in, and kind of the way the NBA really is, is, you know, we get into throwing punches with people, and we like playing fast, and they don't. You know, they really are a static, more pick-and-roll team. You're having to guard lots of times for 15 seconds, you know, 12 seconds. And the rhythm of the game wasn't sort of the identity that we're trying to play with offensively. You know, it's a really low number of assists. The, the speed of the game uh, was difficult more to manage or manipulate on our end. And so what it ended up being is more of a fist fight in, from the defensive standpoint, in rebounding standpoint. And I thought that when you look at, you know, 55 rebounds to 34 rebounds, I'm thrilled with our physicality on the defensive boards. And I think in general, when you look at 86 points at 35% from the floor and 32 from the three-point line and so on, without really fouling too much, I give our defense the most credit for this win. You mentioned uh, Amir Johnson being the bell ringer off the bench. TJ McConnell had to come in yeah. pretty early when Ben Simmons uh, got a couple of fouls. How impressed were you uh, with uh, TJ at 34 minutes of playing time? In, in, in say no more, like because we're always in a decision, especially now that we have Jared, it's really big. I, I felt way more flexible than you did 
last game with eight, you know, nine players makes a world of difference. And so what it also does outside of the volume of people, you get the chance to like, is it Dario's game? I said it pregame, you know, is it going to be a small ball game, you know, is, or is it going to be more cove at four and Dario will sit? We ended up balancing it out, but then you get into the rhythm beat of TJ, you, you know, like he really, because Ben can go to a four, TJ was doing so well. And then it's like, do you want Jared Bayless or TJ? And I think because Jared hasn't played for so long, we opted to go with TJ. And his performance in the first half especially made that decision a lot more clear. Going back to Amir, how does that help you as a coach have a guy who's cool with just taking four shots and will still go out and grab 13 points? Ask that one more time. As a, as a coach, what does it do for you when you have a guy who's cool with just taking four shots and still grabs 13 rebounds? I mean, he, when we looked to sort of build our roster and, and identify people, when we started talking about Amir Johnson, and, and Brian was way more familiar with Amir, this is to Brian's credit, than I was because of his Toronto background. And I started digging in and calling his teammates. You know, I've been in the league for a long time, and so you follow him and you speak to people like Evan Turner. You know, tell me about Amir when you were at Boston and so on. And it was amazing to a man how consistent the reviews were. People skills, work his butt off, could handle sitting and swinging a towel or coming in and making a difference. Um, he, he's a good person and he's a pro. To be able to bring him in the game and not worry about is he happy, is he fresh, is he in shape, does he need 10 shots, isn't ever on my mind with Amir. And he's a perfect teammate. And tonight we saw a real presence defensively. And he came up with a few timely baskets. Uh, he, he is a, he's a legitimate pro on and off the court. He's, he's a wonderful teammate. Coach, you guys started 0 for 9 from 3. Is that, can that be a momentum killer? How do you fight through that? I know Joel missed 3 also. Yeah, and that's not us. You know, we really have some elite three-point shooters and not just one or two. You know, as a team, we're, I don't know where we rank, but I believe that we're amongst the league's best. And to Keith's point, like the style of the game, the pace of the game, just look at our assists. That's not, and it's really not because we were selfish. It's just it was a slow down more type of game, and the pace isn't how we really want to play. And so that broken game, that busted game, nine total threes isn't a big number for us, and the, the, the uh, inability to make one is even more rare. Um, and it does for us is like remind us you have to guard. Like, that is where the world is balanced for me and for us. And I thought our defense was good because our offense got caught more in a style of play than, than anything. Do you have any thoughts on the uh, sequence in the fourth quarter with Joel and, and Donovan Mitchell? I mean, I'm always mindful of, you know, how do we stay disciplined? You know, how do we stay disciplined? And, you know, Joe, Joe understands it's risky if you taunt, you know, like, and I like the fact that's the question that we got asked earlier. You know, I like our guys playing with an edge. You know, I want them to feel some level of swagger and feel good about themselves. And I think uh, I can see it more when I look at it. But I thought Joe, for the limited time that I thought I was going to ha have him, I thought he was good and that was a big play. You know, it certainly got the crowd involved. Thank you.